Welcome to Linear Features. Now just so you know, a linear graph is a straight line graph, one that doesn't have any curves in it at all. Now all graphs have a horizontal axis that we call the x-axis. That runs straight across the page, and vertically upwards is the y-axis. So a linear graph, a straight line graph, will just be a straight line that goes through these axes. So your goal for the video is to understand how gradients, which are called M, and how y-intercepts, which are called C, explain everything in linear graphs. Well, wow, almost everything. So we need to understand what is a gradient and what is a y-intercept, and how do these explain everything in linear graphs? So first of all, let's look at the gradient, which is called M. The gradient means the slope. It's how steep the line is. Now, we start off, this line has a bit of steepness, it goes upwards, but that line could be a little bit steeper, and that would mean that the gradient, m, would have increased. Or on the other hand, it could be a more shallow line, not quite as steep as it was, and in that case, it would have a lower gradient, a smaller number which represented its slope. We could have our graph which is completely flat, that has no slope, and because gradient is slope, that means it must have no gradient either, a zero gradient. Or finally, we could also have a line which is pointing downwards now instead of upwards. If it's pointing downwards, that means we have a negative gradient, a negative m. So what you need to know about gradient, gradient is the slope. It can be steep, less steep, completely flat, which is zero, or it can be negative, which goes downwards. Now all of these are used to explain the slope. But how do you find it from a graph? It's really important that when you see a graph, you can actually read or calculate what that gradient is. So you have to remember this formula here, that gradient is rise divided by run. Rise divided by run, rise is how far it goes up, and run is how far the graph goes across. So let's look at how we calculate it for this graph, because we've got some numbers on this graph, and this graph obviously has some slope. So let's look. Your first step is going to be spotting two points that you know. Now I've just chosen the first one being 3 up on the y-axis and 2 on the x-axis and my second point being about 15 on my y-axis about, and about 10 on my x-axis. Now it does not matter at all which two points you're going to pick, any two points are going to do. Just pick two that you know. Once you've picked your two points, you're going to try and work out what this rise is. Now rise means the vertical distance between these two points you've picked. So here, I've got a rise, the vertical distance between these two points. I also have a run, which is the horizontal distance between the two points. Now I can read specifically what my rise is. If it goes from 3 up to 15, my rise must be 12. And if I run across from 2 all the way up to 10, my run must be 8. Now that I know what my rise is between the two points and my run is between the two points, I can put these numbers into my formula, with rise being 12 divided by run being 8. So here, that gives me my gradient, rise over run equals 12 over 8. Perfect. Now this is a very adequate answer, but it's not the only way you can write the gradient. For those of you who are familiar with fractions, you'll know that you can simplify down 12 over 8. If you divide the top and the bottom by 4, that gives you 3 over 2 which is also a correct answer for gradient. Or, if you like using your calculator, you can do 12 divided by 8 in your calculator, or 3 divided by 2. Both of these will give you a number of 1.5. So here we've got three gradients for this slope. We've got 12 over 8, we've got 3 over 2, and we've got 1.5. Every single one of these is correct. They're all the same number, it's just three different ways of writing it. So when you're finding gradient, you can write it whichever way you like. Hopefully now you understand how you work out the slope. Remember a bigger number is going to be steeper and a smaller number is going to be more shallow. A negative number is actually going to be pointing downwards. So now that we've looked at the gradient, let's look at the only other thing which can change in our graph. Our graph might have moved up a little bit, but keeping the same slope. We could draw another line, which is down a little bit, up a little bit higher, up a tiny bit or down a lot. All of these things have the same gradient, but they're further up or down on the graph. So we measure this using our y-intercept. Now our y-intercept is where these lines cross our y-axis. 
Or more specifically, where do the lines intercept our y-axis, the y-intercept? So this top line has a y-intercept of 12 because it crosses the y-axis at 12. This next line here will have a y-intercept of 6. This big line in the middle has a y-intercept of 3, and we can't see the y-intercept of these two, and so on and so on. So let's look at this middle line here. This line here crosses the y-axis at 3. Therefore, our y-intercept is 3. Now this is as simple as just reading it straight off the graph, where the line crosses this vertical axis. Don't get it mixed up with the horizontal axis, just look at the vertical axis. Now the whole reason we learn a gradient and a y-intercept is so that we can put these numbers, this m for gradient and the c for the y-intercept, into our equation y equals mx plus c. Now this equation is really worth remembering because it's going to come up a whole lot in your exams. It's going to come up in probably the next three or four videos. So y equals mx plus c. The y and the x just mean the y-axis and the x-axis, so you always ignore them. But the m is your gradient, that's your slope, how steep it is. And your c is the y-intercept, where it crosses this y-axis. So you might have to figure out how the slope relates to a real-life situation of distance and time. You might have to look at the start point, which is the y-intercept, or how far something's going, a rate, which is your gradient. But we'll look at that in a question in a moment. You need to know that there are two features for any linear graph. These are really important. The first of those is the y-intercept. That's where the graph starts. That's where it crosses your y-axis. And this is the initial condition if you've got a word context. If somebody asks you about pricing, if somebody asks you about speed and there's a graph there, your y-intercept is where it all starts. The second thing is your gradient. Now this is the slope of the graph. Now if you're ever asked to find a rate of something, a speed of something, how much does something cost per day, that's a rate. How fast is something going, kilometers per hour, that's a rate. You always need to find this using our formula, rise divided by run. Now lots of questions will come up on these, and every time you answer a word question that has to do with the graph, make sure you talk about the y-intercept, where it all starts, and the gradient, how steep something is. These are what they really want to know in every single word question. So let's look at a word question that uses the y-intercept and the gradient as some of our answers. Look for them. This question tells us James is doing some home renovation. He needs a concrete mixer. There are two companies that hire them out, Hyaco and Garden Equipment. And we've got a graph of the cost for the first 30 days shown here. Our first question how much does garden equipment cost per day? So let's look. Our garden equipment is this line that starts near the bottom. Now cost per day, the charge per day, that's a rate. Something per something is a rate. Now remember, it's going to be asking us about our gradient or our y-intercept. So which one is it this time? It's our gradient because it's a rate. So let's look. How do we work out the gradient of garden equipment? Well, remember, gradient equals rise over run. So let's pick two points that we know. We've got this very initial point down here, which is 0, 0. And let's look at the next square that we know. It's $100 for five days. So let's see. What's our rise? Our rise is $100. That's our vertical distance between the two points. Our run, our horizontal distance, is five days. So if we want to find our gradient, it's rise of 100 divided by a run of five. So let's put that down. $100 divided by five days equals... $20 per day. That's our gradient and that's our charge per day. There's our answer. Now you might be able to guess in advance what the second question is going to be asking you about. It's going to be asking what is the initial fixed fee at higher code? Now that's the line that starts further up. It has a smaller gradient because it's not as steep, but it starts higher up. So the initial fee is where something starts. They're asking you about the y-intercept in this case. You've got to know that. So let's read. Where does the y-intercept go? It's where the line hits the y-axis. Now this Hayako line seems to hit the y-axis about halfway between 100 and 200, at about 150. So our initial fee must be $150, because that is the y-intercept. So I hope you can see from this example that lots of these word questions are either asking you about the gradient, or they're asking you about the y-intercept. But that's not always obvious when you first read the question. So when you read a question, make sure 
look for finding the gradient and finding the y-intercept and actually give numbers and explain it.